What's up, people? So I'm super, super excited. First of all, I want to thank my patrons who make these videos possible. And if you want to support me on Patreon, please check for a link somewhere in the description of this video below. Now, Afrorak is not all of a sudden turning into some travel vlog, or at least not yet. But I recently discovered this very beautiful scenic place and I decided that I must shoot this video here. Now, my theory behind all this is that in case you find what I have to talk about midi or CV boring, at least you may stick around for, for the nice views, you know. So to give the topic a little bit of context, when analog synthesizers were first made, there was need to standardize the control voltages across the different equipment, like the oscillators and filters, but also across the different equipment manufacturers. So in the 1960s, Bob Moog decided to divide one voltage into 12 equal musical semitones, and thus the volt per octave standard was born. Now this standard was taken on by other companies like Roland, Oberheim, uh, sequential circuits, and others. But also around about the same time, another standard called Hertz per octave was also developed, which was taken on by companies like Yamaha and Korg, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now, fast forward to the 1980s, digital synthesizers and personal computers were becoming more and more popular. And again, there was need to standardize the interface across all these different companies that were manufacturing instruments. So in 1983, the Musical Instrument Digital Interface, or MIDI, was completed. And this was by a consortium of companies which included Roland, Korg, Yamaha, Sequential Circuits, among many others. Now, soon after that, uh, iconic digital synthesizers like the Yamaha DX7 were released. Now, this new format allowed for a polyphony of up to 24 notes and up to 16 musical instruments to be played simultaneously across 16 MIDI channels on a single cable. So, I'll not go any further into the historical information because it's freely available for reading. Plus, this is not meant to be uh, a history lecture, I think. Anyways, so MIDI is a digital format where musical information is represented by zeros and ones, whereas CV is the analog format where similar musical information is represented by voltages. Now, to translate MIDI into CV, what in essence we are doing is designing a digital to analog converter. Now, in the simplest terms possible, a digital to analog converter is a device to which we send a digital value and it returns to us an analog voltage on its output. Now, there are so many commercially available DACs, but for this project I'll be using the MCP4922, which is a 12-bit dual output DAC, which has an SPI interface. Now, we shall talk about SPI later in the video, but for now, let's head over to the data sheet and read some more information. Quick points to note. We see that it can operate on a single supply voltage from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. It also uses an external voltage reference. The data sheet also states that it has rail to rail outputs, so in theory, if I supply it with 5 volts, I should be able to get a voltage range from 0 to 5 volts at the output. This means that I can be able to reproduce up to 5 octaves of notes with the volts per octave standard. So, with these many words, let's head over to the breadboard and set up the DAC. First, we add an Arduino, then the MCP4922IC. We connect the 5 volts from the Arduino to power the DAC on pin 1 and also connect the Arduino's ground to that of the DAC. According to the data sheet, we also need to add two filter caps, 0.1 and 10 microfarads, as close as possible to pin 1. We also need to connect pin 8 to ground so that both DAC outputs are updated at the same time. We connect pin 9, which is the hardware shutdown, to the positive rail through a 10K resistor to keep the DAC from shutting down. We connect the SPI pins from the DAC to the corresponding SPI pins on the Arduino, and now we are ready to start writing our program.
To send a value to the DAC, we use a protocol called SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface which uses three wires. The chip select, serial clock and serial data. When we are ready to transfer data, we pull the chip select wire from a high to a low state and the DAC gets ready to receive information. Then we start sending clock pulses to the serial clock and on each clock pulse, one bit of data is transferred into the DAC. The write command for the MCP4922 consists of 12 bits. 4 configuration bits followed by 8 data bits. The 4 configuration bits are the DAC output that we are writing to A or B, the input buffer on or off, a gain of times 1 or times 2, and the output shutdown bit. The remaining 12 bits represent values from 0 to 4095. These are sufficient to represent up to 5 octaves of musical notes. So this crazy dude here has said that if I give him an equivalent of three dollars, he's going to jump in the water in the background and swim in it. So I'm going to give him the money and see what he has up his sleeves. Now I understand that this could be quite some information overload for some of you, but again, that's why I'm recording at this beautiful location so that, you know, I keep things moving and a little bit interesting. So let's head over to the computer program and see how this all works out. I'll be using the SPI Arduino library. Then I'll be using the Arduino pin 10 as the chip select. I also have to declare the reference voltage which I measured to be 4.66 volts on the multimeter. Note that the DAC output cannot be higher than the reference voltage, but in the final design, I'll probably use 5 volts reference. So I declare the chip select as an output and turn it high. Here, I start the serial port, declare the order of bits to be transmitted, and set the data mode to mode 0. In the main loop, I'll be calling the set DAC function and give it values of 137 and 0. I go on to define the set DAC function and the arguments it will be taking, which are the value that we want to write to the DAC and the channel of the DAC that I'll be writing to. Next, I need to set the four configuration bits, the channel, buffer, gain, and output shutdown. Next, I write the remaining eight bits of data, and now I'm ready to send an SPI command. To do this, I stop all the interrupts and pull the chip select low, and then transfer the data one byte at a time. When the transfer is done, I return the chip select line to a high state. The datasheet gives a formula for how to arrive at the expected voltage output of the DAC. Remember the value of 137 that we are sending to the DAC in the program's main loop? If we plug 137 into the formula, then we get an expected voltage output of 0 0.1558. So let's compile the program, send it to the DAC and see if I'm still on the right track. And I think I'm still on the right track. Now that we've successfully made contact with our DAC, we need to introduce MIDI into the picture. Now to do that, we need a MIDI input a circuit. And good for us, the MIDI specification document gives a recommended circuit, which looks like this. Important to note is that the MIDI input is isolated from the microcontroller serial input by an optocoupler. This ensures there is no direct electrical contact between the transmitting device and the receiver and this helps to eliminate ground loops. I picked up an optocoupler from what remains of a dead computer power supply. I'm sure that most optocouplers that can be salvaged from old circuits will work just fine in this application. Next, I set up the complete MIDI input circuit that was shown above onto the breadboard and connected to the microcontroller. Back to the program. To keep things simple, I'll be using the Arduino MIDI library, which I include here. Then I create a MIDI default instance since I'm using the default serial ports. This can be altered to another serial port in case the board has others. Next, I start the MIDI serial port and listen to all MIDI channels. Next, I declare that if we detect a MIDI not on, a function called do this or not on will be called. I do the same for a detected not off and I will define these functions later. In the main loop of the program, I'm continuously listening to incoming MIDI messages. I also have to remove the set DAC function, which I used previously as an illustration to send data to the DAC. Next, I define the functions that will be translating the MIDI notes into CV on their respective channels. I compile this and send it to the Arduino. So let's hook the DAC to the modular and see what we can do so far.
So now that we've successfully sent uh, our MIDI notes over to the modular synth, some of you could have noticed that our MIDI notes are not yet defined. They do not have defined beginning points or end points, more commonly called not on and not off. To achieve this, I'm going to use two more outputs from the Arduino so that when you have a not on, these outputs will go high and when you have a not off, these outputs will go low, essentially creating what is called gates. Let's head over to the program and implement this. So what remains is simple. I declare pins 4 and 5 as outputs. Then we go to our not on functions and turn them on when the function is called. We also go to our not off function and turn them off when the function is called. We compile this and hopefully we have a fully functioning MIDI to CV converter with gets. Now, I hope that you learned something because I did. And remember the next time that you need a MIDI to CV converter, you do not need to spend hundreds of dollars because you can make one for yourself for the price of lunch. Of course, depending on how much you eat. Now, if you need to look at the complete program that I wrote, I've left a link in the description. Subscribe, support me on Patreon, and I'll see you on the next one.